is out there and playing rhythm is 60 to 70 percent of what you're going to be doing and for lots of beginners intermediate uh, players it could be 80 to 90 percent of the playing that you are doing is playing rhythm and so this is why uh, today's lesson and the rest of the lessons in in the course are so important because we're going to spend the second half of this course really focusing and working on building your rhythm so uh, you can play all the songs that you want, okay? And guitar players play rhythm by doing something uh, or by playing something that is called chords or using chords, okay? So we're going to learn how exactly to do that. Then uh, we are going to learn how to count, and you might be thinking to yourself, well, I learned how to count back in grade school. Well, in some ways, counting for music is much easier. Uh, in other ways... Uh, there's there's kind of a little kick to it, as you'll see, that is kind of makes it a little bit tricky. And then we're going to get into our songs, and uh, yeah, the challenge is to actually work on these songs and play them. All right, let's get started, everybody. Let's uh, get into using chords, all right? So, the first chord. Right, and first of all, what a chord is, before we continue, and uh, I'm going to talk about this more uh, throughout the rest of this course and the Ultimate Guitar Program, uh, but what a chord is is basically a collection of uh, two or more notes, all right, but usually three or more notes that are played simultaneously. All right, so three or more distinct notes that are played simultaneously. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule, as you're going to see in Lesson 7, um, but um, for now, we can use that working definition. All right, the E minor chord. Everybody should be, hopefully, uh, familiar with their tablatures uh, at this point. Remember, the bottom line is the low E string. The top line is the high E string, right? So it goes from the bottom line, low E, A, D, G, B, and high E. Right. So for here, all right, I want everybody to put their second finger on the second fret of the A string and the third finger on the second fret of the D string. All right. Now, this is something very important as well. Before we continue, before I go ahead and demonstrate this um, chord to you, okay, um, some of you out there might have learned guitar at one time or another Five years ago, 10, 20 years ago, you might have learned some of these chords with the different fingerings. Some of you might have just gotten your guitar a month or two before this course and you went on YouTube or any other um, website and uh, were taught uh, different fingerings for the chords. It's, it's a question that I get a lot and I, I want to... Um, I just kind of get it uh, out there uh, before I continue, uh, again, because I do get the question a lot. Um, and the question is, can I play these chords with other fingerings? Right? Do I have to use these exact fingerings? For the purpose of this course, and uh, also the assignments and the final exam, um, learn these fingerings. All right, the ones that I am teaching you, uh, again, learn these fingerings, okay? And know which finger goes on which fret as I am teaching it to you. Um, and, you know, I'm going to show chords as well that might have a couple different fingerings. So, uh, you know, I will show the different variations. However, um, the, the fingerings for the chords that I give you are the most efficient, all right, and I, I can't stress that enough, that the chords, the fingerings for the chords, excuse me, are the most efficient and streamlined way and, and the best technical way for your fingers, okay? So, without further ado, the E minor chord, let me pop myself over onto the screen here. Hello, everybody. Great to see you on this Monday. Just one second. All right, so, again, second finger is on the second fret of the A string. Third finger is on the second fret of the D string. Right, and what you're going to do is play all of the strings. Just strum all of the strings. Right, we should remember that definition from lesson one. Strumming is when we swipe either our plectrum or your fingers. All right. Over it, all of this. 
strings or more than two, three strings at the same time. Okay, so that is the strum. That is the minor chord as well. Next is the E major chord. Alright, and for the E major chord, alright, we have the second finger on the second fret of the A string, very similar to the um, minor chord. Uh, third finger is on the second fret of the D string, but we have another finger that we must press. Alright, and it's the first finger that will be pressing the first fret of the G string. Okay, and these zeros here again mean that we need to play the open strings of the respective string. So the low E, B, and the high E strings are open. They we see the zero, we play them. Okay? And by playing, I mean we strum them. Um, okay, so that is the E major chord. I see a question coming in from Carmine uh, there. Uh, exactly how to strum with the string, uh, with the fingers, excuse me, <laughs> I'm having trouble reading, I am, um, and do you strum with the thumb or the fingers? So a really, really great question there, Carmine. Uh, if you're using your fingers when you're strumming, uh, you can uh, use your thumb, right, and then we're going to have to do a motion called an up strum eventually, so you can use your thumb for that as well. You can use... Uh, your fingers as well. If you're doing a down strum, right, you use this part, this part of your fingers. And when you come up, you use obviously the other side. Or you can do a combination of both. Down fingers, up thumb. Down thumb, up up fingers. Uh, lots of different ways of uh, going about it. But if you're using the plectrum again, it's just simply down up motion and that's it. Alright, so that is the E major chord. Next we have the A minor chord. And the A minor chord is very, very similar to the E major in that it has the same shape. Alright, except we have to press different strings. Alright, so here, for the A minor chord, okay, second finger is on the second fret of the D string, third finger is on the second fret of the G string, and first finger on the first fret of the B string. Okay, and then all the other strings are open, so let me pop myself back over here. Okay, so here I have the A minor chord. Right, as you can see, right, it looks similar to the E major, right, and then the A minor is just on a different uh, on different strings. All right, so this is uh, one of the things that uh, now I, I, I can say this is that this is one of the beautiful things about the guitar. One of the, one of the things that make the guitar uh, a little bit easier than other instruments, and that is that there are only a finite amount of shapes that we need to learn. And once we learn these shapes, uh, playing the guitar then becomes very, very easy because you can then start playing these shapes everywhere around the neck and the fretboard. Okay. Uh, now I saw a uh, question come in from uh, who was that? Uh, Hala, I think it was, um, and she uh, she was asking what makes a minor chord a minor, a major chord a major. What's the difference? Uh, well, as we saw in the E minor and the E major, that there was the note that was the difference, and that is uh, what makes one major and one minor, uh, the actual technical definition, the music theory definition, is a little bit beyond the scope of this course and uh, also uh, unnecessary for now. All right, so, excuse me, um, we will get into that uh, when we uh, hopefully see each other in the Ultimate Guitar Program. Um, and we learn more of the why things are the way they are in uh, music and why we call certain chords certain things. Um, but again, just kind of notice the difference of uh, the notes themselves and that that in and of itself is the difference between 
a major and a minor chord, okay, or a particular major and a minor chord. So here, now on the screen, we have the A major chord, and there are two different variations in the fingerings that I'm going to show you, uh, because, um, well, this first fingering uh, is, the first finger is on the second fret of the D string, second finger is on the second fret of the G string, and the third finger is on the second fret of the B string. Okay, so let me pop myself over there, and then we have to get all of our fingers on that second fret. Now, this for me is very, very uncomfortable. Okay, I don't know if you can really see on the screen, uh, on, on, on the camera, but my fingers are kind of fat. <laughs> I have fat fingers, old pork chops I do, all right, for fingers. All right, and trying to squeeze all of my fingers onto that uh, second fret on the D, G, and B strings is difficult for me. Okay, and uh, as a result, I need to find a way that is more comfortable for me. Now, if you have, you know, slender fingers, thinner fingers, you know, this fingering is uh, the um, more traditional fingering. Okay, however, if you have fat fingers like me, or are having trouble with that particular fingering, okay, um, we can use our second finger on the second fret of the D string, third finger on the second fret of the G string, and the fourth finger on the second fret of the B string. Okay, so that looks a little something like this. Now, uh, as you can see, I'm using my pinky finger. It is the smallest of all fingers, so it enables me uh, to kind of uh, get the most out of uh, um, the distance and the thickness of my other fingers, if you will, because that pinky finger is smaller. And I'm fretting the same exact strings, same exact frets, and I still get the same, actually for me, a clearer tone with that fingering. So, just recall that we do have the two fingerings for the A major chord. Alright? Then, uh, the last one for today is the D major chord. Okay? And, uh, with the D major chord, we're going to put our first finger on the second fret of the G string, the third finger goes on the third fret of the B string, and the second finger goes to the second fret of the high E string. Alright, so, uh, with this chord, first of all you see here that there are no numbers on the low E and the A string. Now, you can play the A string with this chord. You can absolutely play the A string with this chord. You know, if you hit it, that's okay. Or if you strum it, that's okay. However, you cannot play the open E chord, uh, the open E string. Okay, so only the open A string you can play with this chord, but not the open low E string. With this chord as well, alright, um, now I gave you the order in which the fingers appear, however, I like to put my first finger and my second finger on the second frets of the G and high E strings respectively uh, down first, and then kind of get my third finger to reach around. Um, and to that third fret of the uh, B string. Okay, so that is the D major chord right there. All right, now with all this, again, I'm going to reiterate. Um, uh, I can't remember if I said it, but I'm pretty sure I have. Uh, it's hard to keep up with everything that I do say. But again, remember when you're fretting, you want to kind of have this claw shape, right, uh, in your fingers, right, and and be um, fretting with with this curved first knuckle here, right. We don't want to be flat, especially when we're playing chords, right, uh, because if our fingers are flat, they're going to be touching the other strings, and then they're going to be right. My fingers pretty flat right now, and. Sound. 
that's because my third finger is flat and it's touching that high E string, so, uh, you know, I have to curve it, right? So with all the chords, you want to make sure you have that um, little angle. All right, so what major chord has the first finger on the second fret of the D string, second finger on the second fret of the G string, and the third finger on the second fret of the B string? All right, is it the E chord, A major, D major, or the C major? All right, so I'll give you about five seconds or so to uh, type in the answer. And I'm testing everyone's uh, memory right now. All right, very good. Yeah, I see Philip, very good. Mohammed, very good. Dolores, very good. Uh, Tom, very good. All right, great. Akinawali, very good. It is indeed the A major, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very good. So, let's level up and learn how to count. Okay, now, before we get into learning how to count in music, I want to show you this device here. Uh, the, it, this is a picture of what is called a metronome. All right, now this is a very uh, old-fashioned kind of metronome in that it is analog, it doesn't use electricity, um, and you have to manually set it. And what a metronome does is count the number of beats per minute. Now, if you have a clock at home, or in the office, or wherever, uh, or maybe your grandparents' house, or cousin's house, all right, and I know so many people are using just their digital clocks, their phones, and their computers for uh, clocks uh, these days, but if you have one of them old-fashioned clocks that tick 60 times a second, right, that there is a metronome. Now, it is a very limited metronome because if the batteries are working, <laughs> um, it will tick 60 times a minute, all right? So that means that this, this metronome, this clock, has 60 beats per minute, okay? Now, and, and it beats evenly as well. It beats evenly as well, all right? So uh, what that means is you can play along musically to it because playing music is nothing but keeping good time. And what I mean by keeping good time is that you are keeping even time. All right? That, uh, think of it like this. If you are, um, let's say you, you sprain your ankle or you break your ankle, right? You're going to be walking with a limp, right? It's not going to be a smooth um, transit for you. Right? It, there's going to be kind of a, you know, a, a back, like a, a back and forth movement, you know, like you're not really, you know, walking it in a good rhythm. You can't. You're unable to. You know, you're physically unable to. All right? However, if you, uh, hopefully, nobody here has had to experience that, uh, and hopefully everyone's ankles and knees are all right. You know, but uh, you're walking down the street, and you have no sprained ankle, nothing's broken, your knees don't hurt, your muscles don't hurt, and you're walking with a good rhythm, you're walking evenly, you're not stumbling, you're not limping, right? And that's what we want to do when we're playing music. We want to be nice and even in our playing all the time. And it's something that uh, I've tried to do with you in the first four lessons and all the different riffs and licks that we've learned in the uh, spider exercise, stretching exercise, and all the melodies. You heard me count off. One, two, three, four, right? I was your metronome there. The... Uh, circles on the screen that we were following when we were playing the melody, uh, that also was uh, kind of helping us keep time, right, in music, because again, music is nothing but keeping time. Now, uh, I do encourage everyone to find a metronome. All right, now you don't have to get one of these old-fashioned ones. I use an old-fashioned one because uh, I like to, I guess, save electricity and I'm in some ways old-fashioned myself, <laughs> right? um, but 
Um, you know, there's so many free apps that you can download, uh, and I can't even suggest one because there's so many of them. Um, there's also digital metronomes that you can buy as well. So uh, really do whatever's best for you, but I really do suggest that you do... Um, Find a metronome, download it uh, at, at the very least, just so when you're practicing, you have something that will always keep even time. Okay, so uh, we talked a little bit in lesson one about time signature and what that means, right? And we saw that um, we had this time signature of 4-4, four, four, right? And what I want everybody to focus on is the top number. Okay, the top number tells us how many beats there are per measure, all right? And again, remember that a measure is a space in music that has a certain amount of beats uh, designated by the time signature. So, this top number tells us that there are four beats per measure, and we count this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and so on. So the good thing about music is, and counting in music, is that we don't have to count to like a hundred or a thousand or anything like that. We rarely have to count, and especially for our, most of the music that most of you all will, doing, they will be doing, you won't have to be counting more than six, all right? But this is also very important. I want you to notice how I counted, right? I didn't go uh, one, two, three, a four. Right? I counted very evenly. One, two, three, four. Right? Now, if it's a really fast song, right, I'm still counting evenly. A one, two, three, four. Right? And so the speed doesn't matter. It's about the evenness of how you are counting. So, uh, what device helps us keep time in music? Is it a capo, a tuner, a drummer? Or a metronome. I'll give you a couple seconds to write uh, down an answer. Get myself a little bit of a drink of water. Um, all right, very good. You all are paying attention. Pretty much everyone is saying metronome. I saw Michael said a drummer. <laughs> uh, the, that's kind of a trick question there because a drummer does help keep time, uh, but a drummer is not a device. A drummer is a person. All right, so... Uh, I want to go through different ways how we can count, and in the Ultimate Guitar uh, program, we're going to get more into like the lengths of notes and standard notation and more in timing, but one thing with this timing exercise that we're going to be doing is uh, notice that here there is nothing underneath this um, group of notes here. Now this is the E minor chord. Again, let me just pop myself over over here. Okay. Remember that the E minor chord looks a little something like this. Okay. So, and, and what I want everybody to do is a down strum on the first beat of each mes measure. Right? And I'm going to again do this along with everybody. So I'm going to give you a four count, and then we're going to start on the next one. So one, two, three, four, and down, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, down, two, three, four, and down, two, three, and four. Notice that I was saying down on beat one. That's because I wanted you to do a down strum on beat one. All right. So again, notice that there's nothing underneath here. So that means again, uh, when we see this in our tablature notation, that means we hold, we we let that chord or note ring for four beats. One, two, three, four. Right. I'm not going one. Two, three, right? And then there's silence. I'm letting it ring for the entire four beats, okay? Now, one thing I want to go through as well is that uh, we're going to have to play chords in succession, right? And patterns of chords. And a pattern of chords are 
um, called chord progressions. And we'll talk about this more as well in lesson eight. Right now, here we have four measures here, and the chord progression is easy because it's just the E minor chord. Now, when we got to the end, we did stop. However, what I want you to get into the mindset of is kind of thinking of the piece of music more of as a circle rather than a straight line that has an end. All right, because what is commonly done in and in many, many styles of music, uh, and by bands that are playing live especially, is that they like to extend the different chord progressions. They like to extend the different parts of the songs indefinitely until uh, the band leader makes a cue, and, uh, um, and, and then the band follows and changes to the next part. All right, so once you play the first measure, all right, you go to the second measure. This is something that we have been doing when we've been playing melodies, when we've been doing our timing exercise just now. Then we go to measure three, right? And then we would go to measure four, right? Now, for all intents and purposes, let us say that the song is only four measures long. Now, we can stop, play it, only those four measures and stop. That would be a very short so song. But, all right, to extend the song, to make it longer, to make it more fun, maybe because it just sounds so good and it feels so good you want to keep going, you go back to the first measure. All right, so this is how I want everybody to start thinking of all the chord progressions that you're going to be seeing throughout the rest of this course and the ultimate guitar program. So what does this mean for our, our exercise that we just did? All right, so you can play the first measure to the second measure, second measure to the third, third to the fourth, right? And then, again, if we're tired, if our hands are tired, we can stop at the fourth measure. However, if we want to keep going, we just go back to the top of the song, right? And you might have, you might have heard, uh, uh, maybe you've seen musicians, bands, uh, in smaller venues where you might have heard the band leader, oh, you know, let's play the top, you know, or let's go to the top. Um, or even you might have seen a band, le a band leader tap the top of his head, which is a uh, nonverbal cue to go to the top of the song, right? So this is where that comes from. And, and again, so it doesn't mean that we end when the music ends. It actually end means that we can end whenever we want. You know, just make sure that you do play the whole form. In this case, it's four measures. So again, with the song Hit the Road Jack, Right? I believe, if, if I'm not mistaken, the melody was eight measures, right? Um, and, you know, we can play that melody as many times in a row as we want, right? Also, with the intro, it was four measures, and it was... Right? And, and we could just do that all day if we wanted to, right? We don't have to stop. Uh, we just stop whenever we decide to. All right, so again, uh, just to make sure you all were paying attention, what shape can help you vis visualize the form of a song or piece of music? A square, a cube, a circle, or a tesseract? All right, yes, very good. Everybody's getting this very, very quickly. It is indeed a circle. And uh, um, Sean is asking, what is a tesseract? <laughs> it's a four-dimensional cube. So, um, so here we are. Let's do this timing with the E minor chord a couple times, and then we'll learn a, a few more bits of timing as well. So here we go. A one, two, ready, and E minor, two, three, ready, one, two, three, four, a down strum, two, three, four, and another down strum. So that's the E minor chord. All right. Now, uh, let's do that one more time. All right. A one, two, ready, and one, two, three, and four, down, two, three, and four, down, two, three, and four, down, two, three, and four. All right. Very good. So, now I want everybody to try.
try doing that A minor chord. Remember the A minor is the second finger on the second fret of the D string, third finger on the second fret of the G string, first finger on the first fret of the B string. Right? And all of this all of this information, and don't worry, you don't have to memorize it all in, in one go. Uh, you'll have the webinar slides, the summary notes, the tablatures, all in your toolkits. All right, so here we are, uh, the A minor. Now, notice here we have this little line here, this little vertical line. All right, this is what's called a half note all right, with this little vertical line. So each of these gets two beats. So we go down strum. Two, down strum, four, one, two, three, four. We play on beats one and three. All right, so hold on a second. Let's get ready. Let's get the A minor chord ready to go. And you're going to be strumming on beats one and three. So here we go. A one, two, ready, and down, two, down. Okay, and what we 
have here. Now we see these uh, vertical lines, right, but connected with this horizontal bar. And this is what's called an eighth note, right? And an eighth note is a half a beat, okay? And the way we count this is one and two and three and four and. And the way we strum this is, excuse me, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so we have one, two, ready, and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. One, and two, and three, and four, and and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, let me make my, uh, this a little bit smaller right here. Okay. And let's do that again. This is uh, something that's really important because we're going to need to be doing a down up strumming. Um, again, it's about between 60 and 90 percent of your what will be your guitar playing. Uh, for some people, even 100 percent. So this strumming is uh, really the the most important technique that we can learn uh, today, and really kind of throughout the entire course. All right. So a one. Two, whoops, sorry. Two, three, and four. Down, up, 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 all will be in your toolkit, uh, so you can always go back to it and, you know, work on these different uh, rhythms if you have the time. If not, that's all right. All right. Uh, now, what I want to do is kind of put all the different timings uh, together. Remember, here, we there's no line underneath this E major chord, right? So, we, that means we play it and we let it ring for four beats. Then we have this short vertical line. That means we hold this note for two beats. All right, we let it ring for two beats, then we play again for two beats. Then here, the long vertical line, it's one beat each, and then we have our down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so let's try to put all of these timings together. One, two, E major, ready. One, two, three, and four. This, uh, the E major is the second fret of the A string uh, with the third, second finger. Third finger is on the second fret of the D string. First finger is on the first fret of the G string. All right, let's try this again. A one, two, whoops, a one, two, ready, and down, two, three, four, down, two, down, four, down. Here we are 
with the song Wild Things. Alright, and you have the chord names, alright? Now with the A major, remember you can have your first, second, or third fingers on the second frets of the D, G, and B strings, respectively, or you can have your second, third, and fourth fingers fingers, excuse me, on um, the same strings and frets, okay? Now, um, notice here, uh, we have this half note, so we hold this for two beats, we hold this for two beats, then we have a space, and then we have a space in the beginning of the measure, okay? And that means that there's actually nothing to be played on this beat, alright? Then we have the quarter note, which is one beat, and then this D, which is two beats. So this note here, this chord, comes in on the second beat of this measure. All right, now I'm going to demonstrate this, and uh, it's going to be a little bit more, it's going to be a little quicker than what we're going to do it, but I just want to show you what it sounds like, and then we will uh, try and play it. All right, so here we are. A one, whoops, where am I here? A one, two, three, four... see the one in there, so I think I need to make myself a tiny bit smaller here. Alright, let's do this. Alright, again, a one, sorry, one, two, three, four, A, two, three, four, one, Try to 
kind of uh, help everybody prepare for this time is giving you that stretching exercise. Because that stretching exercise is an exercise where we have to start getting our fingers kind of moving in unison, moving in within one motion, right? And so if you've been doing that, wonderful, and hopefully this is a little bit easier for you to catch on. If you haven't had the time to do the stretching exercise, that's okay as well, all right? Because now we're at chords, and, you know, if you... You might want to now go back and do that stretching exercise a little bit more, right? But again, if you have to go finger by finger and you're not really keeping pace with me, that's okay. But I'm here to push everybody. I'm here to really kind of give you that um, uh, direction on not only what to play, but also how to play and how to practice, right? And it is ideal to practice with an even clock, right? So that's, you know, playing with an even clock, and I, even if it's really slow, all right, is very difficult to do. So again, I don't want anybody to get discouraged uh, by the fact that, oh man, I, I'm not able to keep up. That's okay, all right? Again, I, I, actually, I don't expect everybody uh, to keep up. It's not the reality of the situation. But again, just showing you how to do that, even kind of forcing you to, um, you know, try to keep up is a great mental exercise to, you know, speed up your brain, all right, to try to learn the different shapes and positions as quickly as possible. So, without all this blabbing here, let's do this again. A one, two, ready, and a two. Jordan, I'm sure most of you had, um, I'm, I'm 
about 99.9% sure, and I read this a long, long time ago, and it's stuck in my brain, that he used to train with a medicine ball, um, and when he'd get out on the basketball court, obviously, uh, he was uh, he was king, although, you know, I loved him, but I hated him because I was a New York Knicks fan back then, and they always beat the Knicks, and Jordan always beat the Knicks, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> I digress, I do. Uh, but again, so this is why, coming back to this speed, this is why I just tried to get everybody to play a little bit faster than what we were just doing, because maybe you were starting to get used to all right, that tempo, but then to push you even further, it's like using that medicine ball, right? and then when you go back to that slower tempo, it's going to be a fair amount easier. Okay. So, that is Wild Things. Alright, now let's move to uh, Van Morrison's, uh, uh, I was about to say Gloria. <laughs> Gloria, G-L-O-R-I-A. Do I have any Glorias out there, actually? Any, any Glorias taking the, the course? Uh, this is the last uh, foundation semester, I actually did have a Glorias. And that was... Uh, um, all right, I actually have another one. All right, wonderful. Well, uh, Gloria, I'm sure you've heard this song before, uh, and you'll be playing it now. All right. So, here we are. All right, it's the same exact chords that we played in Wild Things. All right, and cha-ching. All right, this is hopefully now uh, going to make even more connections in that Again, I said this chord combination, E, D, and A, is very, very common. And we've seen it in our second song already. Right? So, again, and, and again, that's what makes the guitar so, so incredible. Is that all you need to do is learn a few basic shapes, a few basic chords, and you literally will have the ability to play hundreds, if not thousands of songs. Alright, so here I'll demonstrate this and then we'll try to do it together. A one, two, ready, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, E, two, three, four, D, A. Alright, now these songs are faster than even what I'm demonstrating, but again, speed is not the, the goal here. Playing nice and evenly, playing on time is the goal. So one more demonstration. A one, two, ready, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right. So let's all try and whoa. <laughs> that, that's uh, really fast. No need to do it that fast. Um, so. Um, we have the E major, D, and A major, right? So let's um, let's do it. And again, we like to think of this this form, this four measures as a circle, right? So we can do this as many times as we'd like, all right? So one, two, ready, and one, two, three, Re ready for the D, ready for the A. Four, E, two, start thinking about the D major, one, two, start A, four, okay, so let's do that again, one, two, ready, and E, two, three, get ready for the D, two, and A, and to the E again, two, ready for the D, and now the A, four. All right, when we are doing this exercise, all right, let me uh, just give you all a round of applause here. All right, when we are doing these exercises, it's important to also... Now, I don't want to add any, anything more, but just kind of, you know, push your thinking towards one way. And we always want to be thinking ahead. So once we play that E major chord, once we strum it, in my head, I'm already thinking about, all right, in the next measure, I'm going to have a D and then an A. So I'm already visualizing what the, um, 
what where the fingers are supposed to go, right? And that helps me to be prepared, right? It's like I am predicting the future in my brain, right? It's one. It's a beautiful thing about music. You can predict the future. Who would have thunk it, right? And so that means again. So um, you're playing E, and I know what's coming next, the D chord and the A. So you might as well just start thinking again about those fingerings. All right, so let's do this again. One, two, ready, and... Two, three, and four... drums on all of these. Let's do that again. One, two, ready, and three, two, three, and four, three, A, two, three, four, three, two, and A, four. All right, let's do this one more time. One, two, ready, and two, three, and four, two, three, four, to the two, three, and four, to the three, two, and Great job, everybody. Y'all ready to go, Buskin? All right, let's do it actually one more time for good measure, and then we'll move on. One, two, ready, and a tiny bit faster. To the D, ready. Then to the A. Then back to the E. Two, three, and four. To the D. Then to the A. So, there we go, that is Gloria, and I'll just, uh, need to skip over the last couple times of, uh, doing it, alright, because I want to get to this next, just at about an hour right now, a little bit over, so, uh, I just want to then do the demonstration for what I like about you, it is a little bit more difficult, uh, so for those of you that really want to challenge yourselves and push yourselves, um, um, again, just do a couple demonstrations, do it, do it a couple times through, um, and uh, what makes this a little bit more difficult is we kind of, again, have to jump to the chords a little bit more quickly. We have a little bit less space in between chords, okay? So, um, whoops. Let me count it off, and I'll demonstrate it, and then, again, we see here we use the same exact chords as we have in the last two songs. So, again, just reiterating the fact that we learn our basic chords, we learn our basic shapes, and that enables us to play hundreds, if not thousands of songs. Two, three, and four. <laughs>
So, you know, this last bit is a little bit trickier. All right, so let's just do it one more time. So one, two, a three, and a four.